Have you been struggling with trying to get a very good sound on the violin? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing tone quality and where to achieve good tone quality on your violin, and it may surprise you. Stick around to the end of the video. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Eric. I'm a violinist. I do a lot of violin tutorials, product reviews on this channel, and everything violin content related. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It also helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. So you bought new strings, you got a rehair, you bought new rosin, and you got a good violin, you, you, you did everything that you can to get the best kind of shoulder to maximize your sound, but you're still ending up a little bit short when it comes to the tone of your sound and the overall quality of your sound. The secret to your sound may not be so much in the strings. It may not be so much in the kind of rosin, although those things help in like micro measurements, but the overall goal is how you place your bow on the string. And this is something that I've learned from a lot of my cello colleagues. So if you're a cellist watching this video, then you might relate to what I'm about to talk about. I want you to make sure that you have all the correct equipment, making sure that your equipment is, you know, at the highest possible quality, that your bow hair is, you know, rehaired, good, fresh rosin, good strings, you know, fresh strings right out of the right out of the case. So let's talk about bow placement on the violin because it actually is very important in the, in determining what kind of quality of sound you're going to get. So I like to describe to my students that, you know, this, this fingerboard over here is called the danger zone for my little beginners. You know, I, th I think it's kind of fun. It's like, ah, oh, it's hot lava, but no, it's not. It's not hot lava. But anyway, they think of the imaginary imagination anyways. So you have this hot lava right here. So obviously getting a good sound over here is not, it's not going to be ideal, right? Unless you're doing something like a Debussy violin sonata where you have this sulatur, where that kind of sound is relevant. But for, for the sake of the argument, we're going to talk directly to the beginners, to the intermediates, and their early advanced students. So we want to make sure that our bow is in the correct location between the bridge and the fingerboard. Now, I want to be clear that the best sound on your violin may be different than on a different violin. So if you're switching violins, you're gonna have to really, really find where that line is between the bridge and the fingerboard. And I had the pleasure of talking to the recently appointed second violinist of the Shanghai Quartet, Angelo Zhang Yu, and he talks exactly on this issue on making sure that he finds the perfect line on a Stradivari violin and he tries to apply it in various forms. Like if it's Mozart, he tries to find a different line. If it's something like Prokofiev uh, concerto or a Tchaikovsky violin concerto, then he really tries to find the correct line to play between the fingerboard and the bridge. And if you have your violin and bow next to you, I want to have a little bit of an experiment with you. And I want you to try putting a lot of weight, well, not a lot of weight, but just enough weight on the fingerboard and let's, for the sake of the argument, start on the A string. So I'm gonna put a lot of weight on the A string and I just play my A string, right? Close your eyes and I want you to see if you can hear a difference and I'm gonna go on a different line that is obviously a, a different sound compared to option A. Now option C, that was option B, now option C. Those are three different lines that I have between the bridge and the fingerboard. And it's really basic. One was obviously over the fingerboard. One was like dead center between the bridge and the fingerboard. And one was like really close. And you can tell the harshness or the, or the tone quality of each line between the bridge and the fingerboard. And the reason for this is that the string is tighter near the bridge than it is over the fingerboard. So of course you're going to get a louder sound when you play closer to the bridge. Now, is it this tone quality that you are aiming for? Maybe yes, maybe no. But it, it could be that. And I tend to be like on, the, on my violin, I like to go like, like halfway. So it's not complete in the middle and it's not close to the bridge, but I like to have, uh, let me give you a little closer look. It's not so much here and it's not so much there. I like to hang out a little bit in the middle. And sometimes I like to hang out 
between the fingerboard and the middle. Those I feel like those are my two preferred spots. And sometimes when you're doing a, a crescendo, you actually overlap those lines. And that could be another topic for another video on how to achieve smooth diminuendos and crescendos. So if you want that video, leave a comment down below. Because you know, you know your violin the best, and I wanna make sure that you are getting the absolute best sound out of your violin without having to work so hard. Now, a couple other factors that you want, you want to consider is that you wanna use a little bit more weight of the arm to, a, to get a good sound out of your instrument. You also wanna make sure that you are pulling the string from the bow. So I'm not pronating, I'm not pressing down, but I'm really using the natural weight of my arm and the gravity for an, for a down bow. And then of course, you know, since I'm going against gravity on the up bow, you know, I have to put in a little bit more effort, kind of like a violist would. You know, if you ever talk to a violist, you know, it's very difficult to get a good sound out of a viola. If you ever try playing viola, then you'll find that the technique on producing a sound on a down bows and an up bows, you are using a lot of weight of the arm. So that is something that we can use from a violist perspective and from a cellist perspective when it comes to the line and the weight. Now, I hope this video was really helpful for you. Comment down below, do you struggle with tone quality? Do you find this kind of information helpful? I wanna get this conversation going down in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. Helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. And also be sure to check out some other videos that I have on the side uh, in the channel. So uh, take advantage of those. Thanks so much and I will see you in the next video.